Okay, let's have a little bit of fun with borders. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a framework or border around this picture. But then we're going to start seeing what other directions we can go in. To make a start, though, we're going to come to the Layers panel. We're going to put in a new empty layer directly above our background layer. We've clicked on this little icon to do that. Coming across the toolbox, we're going to pick up the rectangular marquee tool. And I've got the single selection. That's this little icon pressed there. I'm going to click down drag it across the image. That is roughly where I want the framework or border to be. Releasing it. Because I had that sort of single, that new selection, you can actually move this around, but uh, you, know, you want to get it directly in the center. How do you know where the center of the image is going to be? I'm going to show you. I'm going to move this down into the bottom corner there deliberately, and we're going to fill this with black. That's the foreground color. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard, pick up your fill tool, drag, drop it in. We have filled this. Don't forget, it's a new empty layer. Command D or Control D to get rid of the selection. But as soon as we got rid of one selection, we're going to bring back another. But this time, use Command or Control A. You have now selected around the outside of the image. We're going to come. We're going to pick up the Move tool. You'll notice as soon as we clicked on the Move tool, V is the shortcut, by the way, you've got the menu bar at the top, which has changed. These are the icons. This one here, the horizontal line going through there. If we click on this, it's going to place our selection, this black area, directly onto the horizontal. There it goes. If we come to this one across here, it's going to place the box now directly over the vertical. So we now have the vertical and the horizontal lined up. We should now be directly over the center of the image. Command D or Control D to deselect. Next job is we're going to pick up the one tool. We're going to click down, not on the black area, but in the clear space. Don't forget we're working on a new empty layer. We're going to fill this with white, the background color. Now a great shortcut for this is just use Command Delete. That's Command and Delete. On a PC, it is Control and Backspace. That's Control Backspace. We'll fill that selection with white. Right, select Inverse. We've now inversed our selection. We've selected the black area again and just press delete on the keyboard. That has now revealed the image underneath. There's the start of our framework or border. Well, first stage anyway. We're now going to go to the edit menu. We're going to drop down to stroke. With the stroke, I've got this pixel width set on 10 pixels. It does depend on the file size of the image you're working on. I've actually got quite a large file here. So anywhere between about 6 and 10 pixels is going to be the, the usual size range. Click in. We're going to go from black. We're going to go to a gray color. Something like that is ideal. Click OK to that. Location inside. Click OK. Command D or Control D, and if I just use Command Spacebar just to zoom in over the top of that, you can see there's our stroke line gone around there. It looks a nice sort of uh, sort of stroke, just sets it off a little bit nicely. So out we pop. Next thing, I want to give this framework of this border a little bit more definition. We're going to drop down to the FX icon. We're going to come to Drop Shadow. Now with the Drop Shadow, when this opens. We're going to come straight down to the size slider and we're going to move the size slider to the right because you can't move it to the left. So we're going to move this to the right. And as you move it to the right, you'll notice the way the drop shadow is coming in around. It's giving that framework a lot more relief. It's giving it a bit of a 3D feel. We're going to click OK to that. Right, we can fold this up out of the way. Next thing, if we just zoom out, and I was actually doing this at a recent talk and uh, having a bit of fun along the way as we always try to and uh, messing around and basically it started off by saying right, once you've produced this you can now save this as a PNG file you can then sort of add it to other pictures to other images you can sort of slideshows absolutely ideal PNG again and you can copy it to all the other slides and it, it's fantastic and we were saying about you know it comes in it's gonna be a different size and messing around command T or control T with the transform tool so you can resize it for whatever image size you want and I thought hang on a second we'll have a bit more fun with this I just pressed enter or return there by the way just to get rid of the transform tool still got the one tool I'm going to click down we've selected the center part of the image we're going to come down to the hue saturation on the adjustment layer up it opens now if we click on the saturation 
take it to the left, you'll now notice we've got a black and white center part of the image. You might want to even want to try that. We're going to come to the layers panel. There it is, showing it as a mask. You'll notice this framework around there, so we're actually working on the mask. I'm simply going to use Command I or Control I to invert that. So now the center is in color and the outside is in black and white. Quite clever, really. Right, <laughs> clicking on this. If you move it, you can see the way that the center, the mask there, actually moves around on its own. If we click on the mask, it's, sorry, on the framework itself, you can see the way that moves around on its own. Just use Command or Control Z to pop it back. If you press Control, whilst one of the layers is highlighted, and click on the other layer, now you can move the two around together. But if you've got the Move tool, so press V on the keyboard, if you've got the Move tool, with these two layers which are now highlighted, if you right click, you can choose Link Layers, so it's now linked these layers. You can see this little link icon gone in there. So if I now just click on the framework, it doesn't matter what I do, even though this one isn't highlighted, it moves with it. And you can use Command or Control T, you can make it smaller, just to highlight the center part of an image. Whatever you want to do, just make it a little bit bigger and everything else moves along with it. You may have noticed the mask moving as well. Pressing enter or return to apply. Taking this a stage further again, we're going to switch off the framework. I'm going to come back and I'm going to unfold this by clicking on the little arrow. There's our drop shadow. We're now going to copy the drop shadow to the mask. And to do that, we're just going to press and hold down the Alt or the Option key. That's holding down Alt or Option. As soon as I click down, you notice it's a big rectangular black line come across there, my little double arrows. I'm going to drag it up until the rectangular line comes over this one, dropping in. The drop shadow has now gone in over that sort of the adjustment layer mask, now making it look as if this is set behind it. But if you click on drop shadow, you can uncheck this, you can check on shadow. Again, by moving the size up like this, so you can actually place it in front or behind, entirely up to you. You can even come in, you can put a stroke in. Let's click on the stroke, let's go for a white stroke to make this stand out, and it's on the outside. There it is, but it's coming through nicely on the inside. And it's a great way, you might want to even print it, present your image. He says tripping over tongue, teeth, must be wearing them in for somebody else. But anyway, you can move it around, you can give a little bit of definition, a great way to present your picture. But let's come back to the drop shadow there on the inside. We're going to click OK to that. There it is, with a stroke border as well. Command or Control T. We can still make this bigger or smaller. Drag it up something like this. I'm just going to bring it so that branch is coming in there, that statue is just coming in on the bottom. That looks pretty good like that. Pressing Enter or Return. If you think the stroke line is a little bit big, don't forget you can come in, you can edit it, you can take it down in size a fraction like that just by using, can you click OK, just by using the layer styles. But there's more again. Coming up to the mask, if you press Command or Control, you'll notice the way the cursor changes. Click down, you've got a selection around the outside. Going to come down once again to Hue Saturation. With Hue Saturation, I'm going to click on Colorize. Colorize has now toned the outside of this uh, image. We're now going to drop this down. I'm going to go for a sepia, being as it's an older style building. Dropping it down like this. Coming to the lightness, you can move it to the right. You get a bit of a high key effect. Move it to the left, you can darken it down. Move it all the way to the left, you get a black framework. Move it all the way to the right, you get a white framework. Don't forget, you can change the color of the stroke as well to reflect any differences. So just bringing this in a little bit of a high key effect, coming back to this, but there's more again. Pressing Command or Control, we've highlighted both. What if you want to make this just a little bit smaller? Well, if you use Command T or Control T, you can now lift this up, and you can see it's moving it in together. So if you select something like this, press Enter or Return, so you can move it around, you can still adjust it, but you're thinking, hang on a second, this isn't, it's not toned on the bottom. Correct, it isn't. But if you click on the mask, which is for the toning layer, put white as a foreground color, you can pick up your paintbrush, and you can simply paint it in. So if you want to make any final adjustments, again, you can, and there it is. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, happy imaging, and take care.